grew up in an agricultural uh, family. My father was an agriculturalist. My mother was a full-time uh, housewife, but she came from Telewu. I don't know if the people in Telewu probably know. Her mother came from Saukasa. And in Saukasa, they say their Wu, that's their ancestor, uh, was um, one involved in gardening. And he, I don't know whether it was he or she, was very interested in the way people gardened and had left uh, strict instructions on how to look after the garden, how to look after the rubbish and so on. So I suppose that's where my interest began. Both my parents were very interested in farming and gardening and plants. Mm. Botibotikoro, another commonly used plants. What I'm showing you are very commonly used plants, right? We have uh, hundreds of plants that we use, but these are more commonly used. They're not used only on their own, but they're also used in combination with other plants. Botibotikoro is another weed, just like Totondro. Botibotikoro is used for piles, for abdominal pains, for women's uh, reproductive systems, for children's uh, fevers, for liver problems and digestive problems, for screen problems, for septic wounds, and also for headaches, arthritis, sore throats, and even for blue babies. You take the leaves and then you crush. If you are in an area without electricity, you just crush it like we used to do in the olden days with the other leaves and uh, make a concentrated drink, sieve that and drink it fresh. These leaves, when you use them, are drunk fresh. This is uh, called blue rat's tail. It's another weed. All these are weeds. Huh? This one is used mostly for high blood pressure and for cancer. I first came across it because the woman who used it used it for her cancer. She evidently, according to her, she saw it in a vision. So that is one way in which our healers uh, learn about the use of plants. And it was not shown to her, but the vision, the vision she saw was a bright light with a hand coming out. And then her husband had a separate vision and her husband saw the same bright light with a hand and in the hand was this plant here. So they went to the university and asked the university what this plant was and they got it for her cancer. She had been given three months um, and she was told to go to India, but she preferred to stay here and stay with her family for the three months left of her life. Fortunately, she survived the three months because of uh, this, according to her. After that, a lot of people then also use this for high blood pressure. Um, I think it's all over Fiji now that they use it for high blood pressure. And for that one, they have to process it uh, very carefully. You're not allowed to touch it and you're supposed to half ferment it and then use it. It's a weed and it's introduced to Fiji as a weed. Lila is used for, widely used in Fiji and even sold in markets to keep blood sugar levels down. And we give it to children. We grow it in our gardens grows um, It grows rhizomes every year and then when that matures this dies down. Then when that dies down then we know it's time to harvest this. And this is what you see sold in markets, the rhizome, making drinks not only for children but for adults too. To counter diabetes or pre-diabetic condition or even just to keep us all healthy because we take a lot of sugar. People take this from the market or from their garden and then they clean it up 
found it, heat it up and drink the water. So that's how you keep your blood sugar levels down and hopefully prevent uh, diabetes or pre-diabetes. This is very, very. You take the young leaves and the young stem, um, put them in a bowl of water and knead the whole thing or pound, and then drink. This is used for fevers, for sinusitis, for chest complaints, for sexually transmitted diseases, for relapse, for ciguatera, for negative energy in Ranumi, we call it Ranumi, when you don't know what, how to treat the sick person and you think he's being attacked by witchcraft or something like that. Also, it's used for poisonous fish and for dengue fever. This is a kavika tree. This is an interesting tree because it's one of the many uh, plants that the University of the South Pacific tested for diabetes. And according to Dr. Albersberg, who became Professor Albersberg in the university, um, this was the most effective anti-diabetic uh, medicine that we use. You see here we've scraped the bark, cleaned the outer bark off, pound it again, mix it with water and drink it. And you give it to them in the morning before they start their breakfast. Uh, we call this the tonro in Fijian and its uh, trade name is Gotukola. I found that in New Zealand they sold it in Hubble shops. Mm. But we use it a lot, the tonro. And it's used not only here in the Pacific but Asia as well, Asia Pacific plant. Headaches, stomach pains, piles, diarrhea, dysentery, abdominal pains, urinogenital problems, women's menstrual problems, children's high fevers, skin and flesh problems, liver problems, chills and high fevers. So it's very widely used. It's no wonder they sell them in um, shops overseas now. I had wanted to do medicine at that time come from school straight to medical college, which was Fiji School of Medicine. But my teachers decided they wanted to send me overseas. So I was sent to Auckland University. Uh, I began, I had to finish off schooling at uh, New Zealand Secondary School and then to Auckland University. And with my choice of subjects, um, which I discussed with the principal at that time, the decision was for me to take up botany as a major. So I took up botany as a major and it was just as well because I found I was interested in botany when I went through university. Um, and then I did a master's in plant genetics just out of uh, convenience <laughs> because the one who was willing to supervise me was a geneticist. So that's where my interest was naturally directed, as it were, by the, what was available and what I was beginning to think I was interested in, plant genetics. Sustenance is from plants was very important to me at that time, and uh, dealing with rice was important. Um, we haven't uh, pursued our rice breeding program because uh, just after a few years when we started our rice breeding program we started breeding rice because we thought we would produce rice in a big way but uh, Australia produced rice as well and they have much more land of course much more efficient so they produce a lot more rice than we could so we stopped the rice breeding program at that time and just did uh, little bits of rice like Nreketi but that's the, the reason I got interested in 
plants, yeah? not only because of the flowers that we used to come and ask our friends for from Suva and even steal some seeds, but also because of the fact that most of our feed is from plants. It's an organic farm. Traditionally, the Fijians used to go um, grow crops in the same place maybe twice and then move on. Huh? But here we can't because we have the same plot of land. So we've been growing crops over and over and it's depleted our soils. So in order to re replenish what we've lost, we plant other things um, to replenish. But we also have um, chickens. That's why we have chickens, so we can collect the chicken manure to fertilize the soil. I was hoping that this book that I'm writing would also become useful for a school. If, if that kind of interest developed, we could then begin a school on natural medicine and it could supplement the formal medicinal system or health system that we have. And then young people who are interested in taking up um, medicine, natural medicine, could then go to that school and we can use this kind of information. I mean, we go to India for medical treatment. They are very advanced in Ayurvedic medicine, which is their traditional medicine. Same as in China, very advanced. And in Europe, the, but we, we are neglecting ours. So that's my hope in writing this information in this book, so that at least it stays alive.